So we are back after the lunch break with, uh, uh, with the second part of uh, the first day and we are going to continue with uh, workshops and BOFs and first is ours, he's going to do both a catalyst workshop and BOF. This is not the first one. How do you go up? This isn't the first one. No, no, never mind, sorry. Is it, is it touching? No? Okay. Um, well, first things, I'm sorry, but it seems uh, I mixed up with uh, Theo and that the, uh, the workshop is supposed to be one hour and above half an hour. I thought it was the opposite way, but okay. So, where am I for this? The only thing that matters is that I'm working on the release engineering team that I've been working on the AMD and x86 weekly stages and on Catalyst. So my idea was, since uh, Theo asked me to do uh, uh, workshops, to have something that people could do, to just show how to build a uh, testing uh, stage tree, since uh, there's, there isn't much we can do different on stage tree, and then a, a custom install CD and a custom stage four. Um, just a second, please. This uh, was supposed to, um, this workshop, I put up some, um, do you guys have this? Yep. I put some files in uh, my server that people were supposed to look at, even though I've put them a bit late. But, uh, okay, if anyone ever wants to duplicate what I'm showing, okay, different keyboard. I put everything here in a Catalyst Workshop. I have uh, an instructions file, which has a few years to create since Catalyst requires to build a few, uh, a few deers and uh, to set up some symlinks and whatnot. I have, the, I have it all here. Maybe not? Okay, sorry. And uh, um, there are also a few, fa a few files uh, that you'll need that you could grab from there. Okay, so getting back to here. What I'm doing here is uh, if some of you have already used Catalyst, you know that you can use it manually with uh, the minus F switch to, to give it um, a spec file to build. Uh, besides doing that, I'm going to show it later. I thought it might be interesting to show you uh, how we, with the, the scripts we use to, in Relang to build stuff and that uh, allows us to automate. And so following that, those instructions, you would, to build, um, to build the stage three, uh, three, you would just call the update auto three with the catalyst um, to first update the a snapshot of the tree and then to call catalyst auto with the catalyst auto MD64 configuration. And that would first build you a stage one, then a stage two and a stage three. Depending on your hardware, it may take somewhere from six hours to 18 hours. It also, it also depends on what uh, stages you want to build. Currently, we're, uh, for AMD, we're building multi-leap, no multi-leap. We're trying to build x32, it hasn't worked yet. Adnet, multi-leap, and Adnet, no multi-leap. So it would be five different stages. Um, and with this, ins with this uh, script, you would build um, stages just like the we're building for uh, the official releases. Um, to build this, one of the files is uh, this build environment that sets some of the deals where uh, you, where everything is, where you go grab the rel and repo, which has the configuration files, where to uh, put the temp files. Uh, then we have some configurations inside slash ATC slash catalyst that configure uh, everything. 
like this, where the, where, does the pot, where does Catalyst store the files it creates, uh, or where are the Portage, this file, sorry, where is Portage, what kind of options we want to use for Catalyst. Um, Digests, we've updated uh, not some time ago. We were, half an year ago, we were still using MD5 and Shark 1. Now we're using uh, Shark 5 and 12 and Whirlpool. And then you have a part that it's specific to each file, to, to each host, what mirrors you want to use, and uh, make ops, how many cores you have, how many, how large you want the load to be. In this case, because I want to do something different, I'm saying I want to build uh, a testing system. So, except keywords, told AMD64. If you try to build this with the latest stage three we have in the mirrors, it will fail. It will fail for a simple reason. Currently, all the stages are built from the testing, uh, from the stable tree. And at this point, there are incompatibility with some of the packages. So if you try to build, it will say you have to remove uh, model init tools, if I recall correctly, uh, to build. So I've, bu I've created, um, I've manually updated the stage to uh, use the testing tree that is in, in my server. So if you want to, bu to build based on that, uh, you'll get a stage tree. For um, another example of the custom CD, this is what is uh, usually used in the examples is just to tell it, just to pass it a uh, a spec file. So you call Catalyst with a spec file and it builds um, that target. In this case, an install CD1 or install CD2. I'm doing something different here, which is to send, to tell it the, to use the my configuration file, the minus C configuration file that tells it to use those DIRs that I prefer instead of the default ones Catalyst uses. And for Stage four, each I'm just telling it to um, update the snapshot and then to build uh, a spec. I was trying to, people frequently complain that stage three doesn't have fin, doesn't have emacs, doesn't have something like that. So I was trying to uh, show you a stage four with fin and emacs, but emacs is currently failing to build, so I've uh, switched to Fim uh, and Cho. And so in uh, pro it took me something like four minutes. I had a stage three with Fim uh, and with Cho. Uh, this was supposed to be half an hour, so I wasn't going too much through this. But uh, since it's larger, uh, the slot is for one hour. Um, do you want to see? The files, the, the scripts I have to build is, do you want to see the results, you, the type of things that can, can go wrong and that can fail? The, I can also show the, um, the type of traffic that you can get. Okay, I've done this on my one. Hmm. Sorry, this isn't my laptop, so. Yeah, it's. Sorry, just a second, but it's this one I want actually. So, if you look at the dates and hours, which you can see right now, I think, can you? No. Uh, what if I, oh, that way, I think you can see it. If you start working with Catalyst and you are interested in doing some testing, you can get quite a few emails from it, particularly when things break. 
And uh, this is including quite a few experiments I did for today. But uh, since we do the weekly build every week for the, um, the rail and Goliaths, we get one email for each of the arches, at least, and we get a few more um, when things fail. It's just one if it goes OK, it's more if things fail. So, um, so I just trying to find out when you had that. I'll get to this later, but um, do you guys want to see um, an example of uh, of the spec files and the, the scripts we are currently using to to build stuff? Okay. Okay, seems like it won't show everything. Okay, this seems to work. So um, this is the new uh, railing box that we're using, but I'll start by showing my own box. Uh, by default, um, the railing team is building everything under slash release. I don't like that because I want to have it on the own slash on slash release. And so I've uh, updated the, the specs and the scripts to allow me to use one or the other. In this case, so I'm building an own uh, release and um, everything gets stored under this, under build root, AMD and x86. These are all the stages and CDs I have. Seems like I'm having. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I have a few. Um, This was the first stage for I uh, built. I built specifically for the for the session. I hadn't built any stage for the yet. Uh, we don't do them. Um, and okay, so uh, 
This is the script that is in our uh, Relang repo, that is the main script that we use to create uh, this, uh, all of the stages and issues in the, in the weekly builds. Uh, I won't show it all. It predates me, but this is what we use to build. And then we have a configuration for for instance, AMD, that is uh, just sourcing some uh, files for environment variables, and one of the things that it has is sets. This is something that was added to Catalyst that allows us to say one thing are multi-lib uh, stages, another thing are no multi-lib stages, x32, rnet, or rnet no multi-lib. So if I'm building a multi-lib stage, and the stage um, fails to build the stage since each of these sets, uh, you can see below it, is, for instance, set multi-lip specs as stage one, stage two, and stage three. So it first builds stage one, then builds stage two, and finally three. If it fails building on stage one, it will fail the multi-lip set, but then it will move on to the next one. If it fails stage one, it won't try to build two, and it will move to uh, in no multi-lib. If it weren't done through sets, if we by, uh, were building, uh, when we started building uh, quite a few sets, uh, quite a few specs, if it weren't done this way, as soon as it failed one, all the process would die. And so for multi-lib, we have stage one, two, and three, and then we say that if we can build that, then we try to build a CD, install CD stage one and two. And then we have the specs for no multi-lib, for x32, Arnet multi-lib, and no multi-lib. In the case of Arnet multi-lib, I'm also uh, using it to optionally build the admin CD, which is a set I created, which is mostly the install CD with quite a few tools for administration and for testing that uh, people asked for. and that I've been uh, adding and hope someone will find useful. So one of the things that this does is it goes read the build environment for, uh, for some of the, the definitions. And what I'm saying there is that everything is under home list. Can you see? Yeah. It's under home list, and that I want that the, the specs for the, the Relang repository are under home release Relang, and that it stores all the temp files in that tier, and uh, it then goes to read uh, information for. Um, the AMD uh, builds and the catalyst config file, which says, sorry, catalyst. Yep. So the one I had at the slide, and that tells it where some of the variables that, part, that catalyst requires to build uh, a package are stored. Um, so with this, I can run something just by saying that I wanted to build a stage of IMD64Conf. It's just something, yeah. Um, you can you can use Catalyst without any of this. You can use Catalyst with the default configuration and without requiring any uh, of the release engineering team scripts. So to do that, all you do is basically the Catalyst minus F and the spec you have to create to um, to tell it what to build. And the spec is nothing more than 
something like, for instance, the weekly builds. I want to build for AMD 64 a stage one. A stage one is a set of packages that is defined, that is the minimum required before I can bootstrap a system. I can give it a, a stamp. In this case, I'm using the 2080, which is what we're using internally, even though in the, um, in the end you always see something like stage three, AMD 64, 2012, 10, 12, because we then uh, update it, but internally we're calling it 2080. Uh, default type, I want to use the profile default Linux AMD 64 10.0 since this is AMD 64 and we are still using the 10.0 profile. If tomorrow we were to create the 11.0 profile, we would just switch the profile and we'll start building for that. Um, a snapshot is the version of the portage, the, the portage version that is going to use to, uh, to get the packages to build. And the source of pad tells it what seed stage three once uh, it will use to build. To build a stage one, we first need something to use, and so we use uh, a stage three. Then from that, stage one creates uh, a change route where it will first uh, build the minimum required packages for stage two to run the, um, the bootstrap, and so build JCC, chillibc, and, and binutils, and all of that stuff. Uh, stage 2 is practically the same thing. So, don't it ever see that it's a stage two instead of a stage one and that it's using the stage one which has built to do its job. Then we go to a stage three and it's doing the same for a stage three using the stage two. Stage one, two and three are pretty simple. All we need is a few basic uh, default values and it'll do all the job for us. When we get to something like uh, a stage four or an install CD, things get, or may get, a bit more interesting. We still need some of the same base um, configuration, what kind of arch are we building to, what the stamp we want to give to, um, to the, the file we create, uh, the target, the relative type, the profile, this is all the same. But then we can do things like what kind of use flags do we want to use on the install CD? And so for install CD1, we use all of these, deprecated, Phoebicon, EV6, and so on. And then we have a list of packages that we want to build in the install CD. So if we, want to, if we wanted to build a package with, uh, uh, sorry, a CD with uh, FIM and Emacs, we would just add to this list FIM and Emacs. As you, see, as you can see, we're adding all of these packages in the official install CDs. Uh, one of the differences between install CD and, sorry, install CD stage one and two is that install CD uh, stage one are for packages that have no kernel requirements. So if you have a package that needs a kernel to build, you can do it in stage one. You need stage two. On stage one, we don't have kernel. On stage two, something very similar. In our case, one of the differences gets here that we want a boot kernel that we call Chin2, and we're using Chin2 sources for that, and there is the config file for building the kernel. So all, all of this information is in the Relang repository. Anyone that is interested in seeing the specific uh, features and specific configuration we use or duplicate it, the information is public. 
We also have some use flags specified for stage two. For building the kernel, we need a few packages. And then we do something different, which is for saving space. And in some cases, we'll probably be reviewing this because most of this hasn't been reviewed in a while. We start taking things out. Because if we leave everything there, we get uh, a bigger CD. Currently, our CD is around 170 megabytes, if I recall correctly. Uh, it's probably not as important these days. Uh, a year, some years back, it was more important. But so we, uh, we then merge, we tell it we don't want these packages. And then we tell it to empty all of these tiers and to simply remove all of these files. Some of this is needs to uh, be reviewed because, as I say, this hasn't been, some of this hasn't been reviewed in a while. Um, one of the things. Sorry, just drink. Uh, one example I had initially uh, in there um, for 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 this uh, workshop, and one of the files, the install CD stage one and two that, that I have uh, in my server. The difference I have for the regular. Uh, for the ones we're building uh, every week is I was just adding Emacs and Fim since people often complain that we don't have them in the CD. So if anyone wanted to build a CD with Emacs and Fim, all they would need to do, the diff they would need to apply to our uh, official specs would just be this, adding Emacs and Fim to the list. And to build a stage four, a stage four can be can be almost as complex and uh, as the install CD. Since on a stage four we can add kernels and we can uh, add packages, can change use flags, a lot of things. But if I also wanted to pick up a stage three and add it a theme and Emacs, all I added to do would be to add stage four packages. In this case, I didn't use Emacs because Emacs was failing, but show and film. So with this, I would get this. Uh, the same thing as the stage three, but with Joe and Finn installed on it. Um, I know this is very quick and doesn't show anything, <laughs> doesn't show too much. Um, it takes it takes some time to go through Catalyst and uh, quite a bit of experimenting with it until at least I was able to build something mildly interesting with it. But uh, is there any specific question, anything I can try to... Uh oh, uh, yeah, the mic should be somewhere. Do you have the mic? Stella, do you have the mic? Okay, it's coming. Uh. Yeah. So basically, I have two questions. Okay. Uh, one is, uh, how much space does, let's say, AMD minimal require to prepare? Can it be done in a, in a TMPFS or not? Uh, or let's say eight gigabytes, would it be enough? 
each stage and each uh, CD itself doesn't take that much space. You can build, uh, f for instance, the, the MD64 we had there, which is AMD multi-lib, no multi-lib, X32, Arnold multi-lib and other no multi-lib. You can probably build that with one gigabyte or two gigabytes. There are a few issues though, first. If you use Catalyst repeatedly, each day you use Catalyst, it creates a snapshot of Portage. If you know slash is a slash Portage, you know it takes a lot of files and that summed up, it takes a lot of space. So one of the instructions that I had in the, the file is, if you want to build Catalyst stages, be very wary about the number of inodes of the partition you, you're using and depending on what you want, give it some space. 20 gigabytes, 40 gigabytes. If you want to do it a few times. If you want to do one, two times, it's not very often. But if you want to be doing it weekly, you, know, you want to give it space and you want to have scripts to clean up. We have scripts to clean up. Before we had that, after a month or two, we would start running out of space, starting running of, uh, out of inodes, and that stuff, because it really takes quite, uh, particularly the inodes. It, okay, it's also so, so another question, a little okay. bit more tricky, I guess. Uh, could we get UFI support for our install CDs? That's a good question. That's something we have to work on. Uh, I, I have an email. I've got an email from someone uh, for adding UFI support for, uh, for Catalyst. I've been sitting on it because <laughs> I've been a bit busy. And um, the, the Catalyst part is simple and I'm probably going to commit that in a day or two because it isn't very, uh, very special. The thing is that for building it, the, the person used, um, when we build, when we build uh, stages, Catalyst is, sorry, just to show you. This is the source of the Catalyst repository, which is on Git overlays to work for anyone that is interested. The files that I used to boot the live CD are inside the CD tar. We have, these are binary blobs with uh, FI, UFI uh, group. And so I was sent, uh, a binary blob. And I'm not feeling too confident about putting that without knowing what's inside that. So I'm trying to, to, to talk to the person, know exactly how we did it, so we can duplicate it and then uh, put it working. But that's something we know we have to work and that we're very interested in fixing soon. Hiya. Are there any more specific questions that I could answer? Uh, I'm sorry, I know this isn't too exciting. Uh, the most you can get is, uh, if you like looking at the screen output, and if you wait long enough, you can see a few packages being built. That's what Catalyst gives you, and in the end, you go look and you have a stage three file and an ISO, and you can share that with someone. No flashing lights, no. <laughs> oh, okay, so there was a question there. Oh, Patrick. Theo, can you please uh, lend the mic to uh, Patrick? Uh, since we're talking about Rela in general, um, do you do any statistics on Inferpol does on downloads of the uh, daily bills? Just how much does do they download? We, we don't have that. Yeah. Infra might have it. We don't have it. Since that's, that, uh, that's done through the mirrors, we don't control them. But that's something that uh, uh, I think they have. I don't know if Jamie wants to uh, ask numbers and wants to uh, share with us or... Do you have an idea? Uh, you, you don't really know for the mirrors because they're not ran by us. Yeah. Uh, there are some torrent uh, statistics 
and some bouncer st statistics for people that use that service. Um, I don't have the links offhand, but I can get them to you to okay. pass on. So the, the problem is the community mirrors, since we don't control them, right? We have no idea. Exactly. We don't have any logs or info on that. But if it makes sense, I believe that we could, we could set up something to get some statistics from various community mirrors and combine them in our own web page. Yeah, you would depend on, the, on them providing the info, right? Since, since it's just running. Actually, uh, this is now it came to me that uh, a lot of projects I'm pretty sure would be pretty interested in, you know, number of downloads of, you know, the mirrored stuff, not just us, but other projects as well. And it shouldn't be that much work for the mirrors to actually just count. To the, the problem is that, as I understand it, if you have community mirrors, we're, we're uh, making that available to the mirror. All we know is that the mirror got the file. We don't know who got it from that mirror. Uh, and most of our mirrors are community mirrors, right? Yeah, to explain better, we have uh, our own mirrors that we control as an infrastructure team, and we have plenty of community mirrors around the world that we have no control there. Sorry? Ah, yeah, I know that, but I'm just trying to make it clear to the, to the crowd. Yes, I know. Okay. Uh, I know this, this way doesn't make any sense. If anyone is interested in Catalyst, I'm very happy to talk to the people, to explain, to help install Catalyst, to e experiment with it, to do new stuff. So, if you want, just give me a call or poke me on the RC email, whatever. So, if, let me just. Mm, is this okay? Just for me, that's that's all. So, thank you. Thank you.